These are the lesson 11 four notes arithmetic series summation notation. Today we're going to calculate a sum using summation or sigma notation, and we're going to use summation notation to write an arithmetic series, and we'll find the sum of the terms in an arithmetic series as well. First of all, let's look at this formula here. This looks very different. We've got a 6 up here, this thing, n equals 1, and 4n plus 1. This is called summation notation. This is the Greek letter sigma. This is a capital sigma. And what this means in math is that we're going to take a sum. So whenever you see this Greek letter sigma, it means that we're going to take a sum. The number at the bottom is a value that we're going to plug in for n into this expression. So we are going to start by plugging in 1 here. This is actually called the lower limit. It's the first number that we're going to plug in for 1 into our formula. The number at the top of this symbol, this 6 here, is called the upper limit. And this is the last number that we're going to plug in for n. So we're going to plug in 1 for n. And we're actually going to plug in every number between 1 and 6, going up by 1's. We always go up by 1's. And we always plug in every number starting here and ending here. So that's basically what we're going to be working with here. This thing right here is an explicit formula. So typically in parentheses. And this is the formula that we're going to plug in our values for. So what is this actually equal to? Well, in this problem, we're going to start by plugging in 1 for n. So I'm going to replace the n with a 1 in this formula. 4 times 1 plus 1. Then I'm going to replace the n with a 2 in this formula. 4 times 2 plus 1. And then I'm going to replace it with a 3, a 4, a 5, and a 6. And I'll stop when I get to the number 6. I put parentheses around all of these terms, and we're going to add them together. The summation, the sigma notation, means that once we come up with these six different values, we're going to add them together. Then we can crunch them out and find out what we get. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1 is 9. 4 times 3 is 12, plus 1 is 13. 4 times 4 is 16, plus 1 is 17. 4 times 5 is 20, plus 1 is 21. And 4 times 6 plus 1 is 25. Then you can add these values together. When you add these values together, you get 90. And that's how summation notation works. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to pause the video and see if you can come up with these summation notations for these four different sequences of numbers. We'll pause the video and we'll see what you get in just a moment. For our first sequence of numbers, we're going to start by substituting 1 in place of n, and then 2, and then 3, and then 4, all the way up to the number 5. We substitute those numbers in, you add these five values together, and you get 15. For the second set of numbers, we're going to start by plugging in 0 this time as our first term. That's our lower limit, so we plug in 0 for n. And then we're going to plug in every number increasing. So we'll plug in 1, 2, 3, and then finally 4, because 4 is our upper limit in for n. You could temporarily calculate what these individual five values are. These values would be 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. And you can add those values together. Or if you want, you can type in all of this directly in your calculator, and you would get 25. For the third sequence of numbers, we're going to plug in 3 for n, and then 4, 5, and finally 6, because 6 is our upper limit. And you get these four values here. You can, again, crunch them out individually. You'd get 1, 2, 3, and 4. And when you add them together, you get 10. Finally, the last sequence of numbers doesn't have any n values. So when n equals 1, we get 3. Uh, when n equals 2, we get 3. When n equals 4, we get 3. And when n equals 3, obviously, we get 3 as well. So in this problem, it'd be nice to be able to substitute 1 in for n, but there's no n value. So basically, every term is equal to this number, and you get 12. And the sum of the terms in arithmetic sequence is called a series. So when you add these numbers together, the series is equal to 12. Now we're going to practice using summation notation to write an arithmetic series. Essentially, there's two steps. First, we're going to write the formula that generates the terms of the series using our explicit formula for arithmetic sequences, a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. And we'll simplify this if possible. Finally, we're going to use n equals 1 always as our lower limit. It's just easier to work with that way. And we'll plug in the number of terms in the series as the upper limit. For example, for the series 4, 7, 10, 
etc. for n equals 6 terms. We're going to first start with the right side of our formula, a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. In this sequence of numbers, a sub 1 is our first term, which is equal to 4. For right now, I'm going to leave n alone. And d is the constant difference, and you can see these terms are increasing by a positive 3. You can leave it like this, or you can simplify this expression. I'm going to do that by distributing the 3 across the n and the minus 1, so you get 3n minus 3. And then you can simplify 4 minus 3, which is 1, so we have 3n plus 1. My formula is going to start with the Greek letter sigma, which means we're going to be adding these numbers together, 4, 7, 10, etc., for 6 terms. We're always going to start with n equals 1 as our lower limit. Our upper limit is the number of terms, so we're adding 6 terms. That's going to go on top. And in parentheses is going to be this expression we just calculated, which is 3n plus 1. And the reason that this works is if you substitute 1 in for n, 3 times 1 plus 1 is 4. If you substitute 2 in for n, 3 times 2 plus 1 is equal to 7. If you substitute 3 in for n, 3 times 3 plus 1 is equal to 10. That generates these three terms, and we would do this six times. What I'd like you to do is pause the video and see if you can come up with a summation notation for these two arithmetic series. For our first sequence, we're using our explicit formula. The first term is 4. Constant difference is 3. When you simplify this expression, you'll eventually get 4 plus 3n minus 3, which equals 3n plus 1. That's the explicit formula that goes on the right side. We always use our lower limit of n equals 1 on the bottom, and we have 6 terms, so that goes on top. For the second example, our first term is 9, so that's our a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times the constant difference is a negative 1 because the numbers are decreasing in value. When you distribute the negative 1, we get 9 minus n plus 1, and that simplifies to negative n plus 10. That's your explicit formula, which we put in parentheses on the right side. n equals 1 always on the bottom, 10 terms, so 10 goes on top. For the third set of numbers, we're using, again, our explicit formula. So our first term, a sub 1, is 10, plus n minus 1 times the constant difference, which is 30. So we end up with 10 plus, when you distribute 30n minus 30, that simplifies to 30n minus 20. That's the explicit formula that goes on the right side with n equals 1 on the bottom and 8 on top. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to find the sum of the terms of an arithmetic series. Now to find the sum of the first 100 positive integers, 1 through 100, you could obviously brute force this and go 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. That's okay in theory that works, but it's also kind of difficult to do. If you're trying to do this in your head, it would be nearly impossible. Well, maybe not impossible, but it would take a long time. 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 3 is 6, plus 4 is 10, plus 5 is 15. You could do that, it would take a while to get through. So here's a little shortcut way of finding this sum. First thing we're going to do is not add the numbers in order, but we're going to add pairs of numbers starting from the outside. So we're going to add these two numbers, the first number and the last number. And you notice these numbers add up to 101. If you add the next pair of numbers, as we work our way inside, 2 plus 99 is 101 as well. If you add this next pair of numbers, 3 plus 98 is also 101. So each pair of numbers apparently adds up to 101, and this is true as you work your way all the way to the middle, the final pair would be 50 plus 51, which also adds up to 101. Now, how many pairs of numbers are there? Well, there's 100 numbers all together, so there must be 50 pairs. Because if we cut 100 in half, you would get 50 pairs of numbers. So if there's 101 for a sum for each pair of numbers, and there's 50 pairs of numbers, the total sum would be 50 times 101. And yeah, you could use a calculator for this, but you don't even need a calculator for this. You could actually just multiply this through, and what you would get for a sum is 5050, zero, zero, which is a neat little shortcut rule. So what did we just calculate here? We calculated the sum of an arithmetic series, and we essentially used this formula. S sub n, which stands for the sum of n terms, is equal to n over 2 times a sub 1 plus a sub n. n over 2 represents the number of pairs that we're working with. So if you have 100 numbers, we divide it by 2. Take the number of terms, divide it, this gets you the number of pairs. 
The second thing that we have in parentheses here, a sub one, that's your first term, and then a sub n, if you're adding n numbers, a sub n is actually the last term of your sequence. So we're gonna use this formula again to see if we can find sums of different terms here. So let's look at this example. It says find the sum of the first eight terms of the sequence, 5, 10, 15, 20. Now, to find the sum, we can use our formula. S sub n equals n over two times a sub one plus a sub n. Now, how many terms do we have? Well, there's eight terms. So if we do eight over two, we'll get the number of pairs. This will end up being four. I know the first term in the sequence is five. The last term in the sequence is not 20. I want the first eight terms, and the fourth term is 20. I don't know what the eighth term is. So if you aren't sure what a certain term is equal to, you can go back to your explicit formula for finding terms of a sequence and find the eighth term this way. The eighth term here, a sub n, is gonna be actually a sub eight, and this is gonna equal the first term, which is five, plus we want the eighth term, so we'll plug in eight for n, and our constant difference is five. And if you calculate this out, you'll get five plus eight minus one is seven times five. Seven times five is 35, plus five is 40. And that is our last term. Now you could brute force this out. I mean, we're only counting up by five, so the next four terms after these first four would be 25, 30, 35, 40. So if you wanted to calculate it out that way, that would probably be just as fast, if not faster. Anyways, the first and last terms add up to 45, as do every pair of numbers add up to 45. We added up four pairs of numbers. That's what eight over two is equal to. So we have four pairs of numbers that add up to 45 each. If you do four times 45, you get 180, which is the sum of the first eight terms. What I'd like you to do is pause the video and see if you can find the first 100 terms of that sequence and the first 200 terms of the next sequence, and we'll see what you get in just a moment. For our first sequence, again, we're gonna use our summation formula. So we're gonna do n over two, times a sub one plus a sub n. So this formula I'm highlighting right here, we're gonna use right here. I know there's 100 terms, so it's gonna be my n value. I know my first term is four. What I don't know yet is the last term. I don't know that it's 400. So to find the last term, we're gonna go back up to this sequence formula right here and use this formula to find out what our 100th term is equal to. So here what I did is I plugged in the first term four. There's 100 terms. The sequence goes up by fours and you can crunch this out and get 400. So there's our term here. So 100 over two means there's 50 terms. Each set of terms adds up to 404. You multiply it together, you get 20,200, and that's your answer. For the last term, what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in 200, because there's 200 terms in for n. The first term is equal to 1,000. Again, I don't know the last term, so I'm gonna use my sequence formula. I plug in 1,000 for a sub one. There's 200 terms. The terms are decreasing by five, so don't forget we're gonna use negative five here as your constant difference. When you crunch this out, you get the 200th term equals five. We'll plug that in for a sub n. There's 100 pairs all together. Each pair adds up to 1,005. So when you multiply these together, you get 100,500, and that's the sum of the first 200 terms.